So you're looking to get the new M1 MacBook for your analytical needs, you use applications such as Excel and Python, but you're not really sure which M1 MacBook to select. In this video, I'll be going over which computer you should be selecting based on your need. For me, for the first time, I'm Luke and I'm a data analyst and I've been using the new M1 Mac for my job. And so I figured I would share some lessons that I've learned whenever I was going through and searching for the new M1 Mac. For this, I'll be discussing the different options available from Apple and looking at specifically graphics, memory, and storage. And like any data nerd, I've put together a dashboard as well that you can do price comparisons between the different Macs. So with that, let's jump right in. So let's look at the two options available for laptops for or getting the M1 processor. So those are the MacBook Air and then also the MacBook Pro, which is only available currently in the 13 inch. First, let's look at what is similar between the two. Both of them use the same PU and are using the M1 chip. Additionally, the RAM or memory is configurable at eight or 16 gigabytes, and also storage is configurable from 256 gigabytes to two terabytes. Both the memory and storage have similar price points, whether you're using the Air or the Pro for upgrading your memory or storage. But you're watching this video, so you obviously wanna know what are the differences between the two. The MacBook Pro is obviously bigger, so because of this bigger size, it supports an internal fan. And this is good, especially if you're doing some sort of long lasting computation or analytics, you would want that fan for the processing. One thing to note about my M1 Mac is I've been doing tons of analytical operations. I've also been doing video editing for this channel. I haven't heard the fan cut on once. Next is the touch bar. So the Pro is going to have the touch bar and the Air is not. Personally, I can't stand the touch bar, so it's not really a Pro that the Pro that the Pro has it. And then finally, the last major difference I found was the battery life. So the MacBook Air only has a 18 hour uh, battery life, I say only, and the MacBook Pro well, has a 20 hour battery life. So a two hour improvement. I don't really know if that's really that much of a difference. Other considerations is both the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro only support officially one external monitor, but there are workarounds that I currently utilize to support more than one monitor. And I'll include a link down below on how you can actually do that if you need to set up an additional monitor. So if you're deciding between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, honestly, if you're just doing basic data science needs, my recommendation is gonna be go with the MacBook Air if you're trying to save money. If you have the extra money, go for that MacBook Pro. But overall, I don't think it's gonna be necessary. So now let's go further into depth with some of the specification options that you can select when picking out either your MacBook Air or MacBook Pro. First one we're gonna look at is the graphics or the GPU. The Air comes with the option of either coming with a seven core GPU or an eight core GPU. The Pro only comes with the eight core GPU. What I've noticed when going through and testing this and running 10 different uh, browser tabs, multiple Excel sheets, uh, Tableau up, Python running, my GPU never got over, uh, for my eight core GPU on my MacBook Pro, it never got over 50% load. Uh, my recommendation between choosing between the seven core and eight core, if you don't have the money, just go with the seven core, it's gonna be more than enough to fit your need. The next hardware component to look at is your memory or RAM, random access memory. And you have two options. You can either get the eight gigabyte or upgrade to the 16 gigabyte for $180. To show an extreme case, I started up my computer with multiple different Chrome tabs, multiple different Excel, Tableau, and also Python running. And I was getting around nine to 10 gigabytes of RAM usage. So a little bit over 50% for my 16 gigabyte uh, MacBook. And you're probably saying to yourself, hey, that, I mean, obviously I need more than eight gigabytes. And this is an extreme case. I also have a lot of different background applications running. For most people that just use common applications such as Excel and Python and maybe some internet browsing, maybe Spotify, the eight gigabyte is going to be more than enough to satisfy your need. But if you think that you're going to need more, so you're gonna be using things like virtual machines, or maybe you're gonna do video editing, 
I would recommend that you update or upgrade to the 16 gigabyte because one thing to note is you cannot upgrade your RAM once you get your Mac. It is, it's permanent. The last hardware component to choose is your storage and different SSD sizes come with the MacBook Pro and MacBook Air that are gonna vary in size from 256 gigabytes all the way up to two terabytes. To get a rough estimate of what you may need, I recommend just going into your current Mac, if you have one, or Windows, and go in and see how much storage you're using now and do the selection off that. If money is a concern, I highly recommend just going with the lowest option of 256 gigabytes, and that's gonna be, that'll be more than enough to handle your storage needs for all your applications and all your different documents for data science. And one option just to consider, right? This is a one terabyte uh, external hard drive, costs about 40 bucks. You can always move whatever files and stuff onto this external hard drive later on. So that's why I say, hey, with RAM, you can't do anything about it later on. That's why if you need to upgrade, upgrade. For the storage, you can always get some sort of external storage later on. So for the average data analyst or data scientist that are gonna be using those Excel and Python and whatever it may be, those common applications, I recommend, and you're trying to save some money, go with the MacBook Air, seven cores, perfectly fine, the eight gigabytes of RAM and the 256 gigabytes of storage. If there's anything, if you do have some extra cash and you're looking to upgrade any component, the first thing I would upgrade is the RAM. And then from there, base your other upgrades based on whether needs you have. So if you know you're gonna be doing extended data analytics, maybe you need to go with the Pro. Or if you know you're gonna do a lot of files uh, in the future, maybe you need to upgrade the storage. And with that, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Smash that like button and I'll see you in the next video.